All right, this podcast is going to be about cellular respiration. You can see now, this is uh, we're in chapter 9 now, and there's your uh, book pages. Let's dive into what this process is and why we need to know about it. Okay, here's your definition of cellular respiration. It's a process that releases energy, you all know that energy is ATP, by breaking down glucose in the presence of oxygen. You all know that plants make their glucose by doing photosynthesis. We just finished learning that process. Heterotrophs like us, we get our glucose by consuming other organisms and digesting them. So that glucose, which is a sugar, is going to be broken down to make the fuel that our cells need, and that's called ATP. So a little bit of a repeat of what I just said there. Think back to your cell city project. Which organelle uh, does cellular respiration happen in? Hopefully, no, it's the mitochondria. All right, the powerhouse of the cell. What that means is that takes the glucose in and makes the ATP. And back to our cell specialization, what we're talking about there, why would we expect to find more mitochondria in a muscle cell as opposed to a skin cell? Because muscle cells have higher energy demands. It takes a lot more energy to move your bones around than it does to be skin. All right, so a cell that needs a lot more energy is going to have many more mitochondria. It's going to use a lot more glucose because it needs to make more ATP. Our cellular respiration equation looks like this. Make sure that you write this down. Our reactants are oxygen plus glucose yield carbon dioxide, water, and ATP. So remember, this here is glucose. In our biochemistry chapter, this was that ringed structure, uh, and that's what all the carbs looked like. And what we're, this is the whole point. This here is our main product. This is the whole point of doing this. These two guys are byproducts. You all know that we breathe this right out. <clears throat> our bodies will reuse this water. Uh, this, is why the, this is why we need to breathe. This equation should look strangely familiar to you. Uh, take a minute and think back to what the photosynthesis equation looked like. Photosynthesis had water as a reactant plus carbon dioxide and the presence of light that, were, that would yield C6H12O6 that made the glucose for us and released oxygen as a byproduct. Respiration is basically the flip-flop of photosynthesis. So here are the products of photosynthesis. Those become the reactants of respiration. Here the reactants of photosynthesis become the products of cellular respiration. So if you memorized photosynthesis already, you have the basics of what the respiration equation looks like. You just have to remember to put ATP into, into there as a product. That's the main reason why we're doing this. And respiration does not require any light. So jot that down and in your brain just get that resolved. It's basically the same equation, just flip-flopped. And you have to just fine-tune the energy. Okay, there's no light energy used, but you make energy in the form of ATP when it comes to cellular respiration. All right, so the stages of cellular respiration, it's kind of like a, a pre-stage, a stage that has to happen before cellular respiration. And that process is called glycolysis. You know, lysis means to split. Glyco is talking about glucose. So this is a uh, stage where we're going to split glucose. This happens outside the mitochondria. This happens in the cytoplasm. And here's the definition of glycolysis for you, process that breaks down one glucose molecule into the starting products of respiration. And those starting products are called peruvic acid molecules. You need to know that we need to put two ATP into glycolysis. So in glycolysis, we need to invest two ATP to make it happen, but it's going to make four ATP for us. So that means we net... Um, 2 ATP. So this process that happens in the cytoplasm outside of the mitochondria is going to make 2 ATP for the cell. And this has to happen because those peruvic acid molecules, which are the product of glycolysis, they go into cellular respiration to make even more ATP. Once we've done glycolysis and you've made your 2 net ATP, uh, the fate of those two peruvic acid molecules right here, the fate of those guys depends on what's going on in the cell and what kind of cell it is. Let's look at the main one first. Um, so we went from glucose, remember, and through the process of glycolysis, 
which means the splitting of glucose, we made two molecules of pyruvic acid. Now, these still have a ton of energy stored up in them, and the cell wants to release all of that energy so it can have more ATP. So, if there is oxygen present, like right now in your body, there's oxygen for every cell that needs it. You're just sitting there. You're not breathing heavy. So all of your cells are doing this path number one. You're taking your pyruvic acids. You're moving them into the mitochondria. And you're doing cellular respiration to them. Cellular respiration takes those pyruvic acid molecules and breaks them down to form carbon dioxide, which you guys know we breathe this out. This is a waste, so we breathe that right out through our lungs. We make some water, which our bodies reuse, and we make 34 more ATP. That's a lot. So we get 34 ATP from cellular respiration, plus the two we were able to make from glycolysis. That means from one glucose, if there's oxygen present and there's a mitochondria there, like there is in our bodies right now, you can make 36 total ATP from one glucose. That's about as good as it gets. Okay, 36 ATP, that's the most you can get out of one glucose. And uh, the rest of the energy from the glucose, because we're not 100% efficient, that gets turned into body heat. So this is path number one of pyruvic acid. Uh, out here in the cytoplasm, we do uh, the glycolysis. And that gets us the two ATP right here. We move into the mitochondria where we do cellular respiration. We make our carbon dioxide, we make our water, we make more ATP. And that is the most efficient way to make use of glucose. So this is what we just wrote down. Uh, in your book, you're going to see words like Krebs cycle, electron transport chain. Um, we mentioned an electron transport chain back in uh, photosynthesis, but it also happens in the mitochondria. So those are the two steps of there's number one and that's the second step of cellular respiration okay we're not going to know those in detail but I want you to know cellular respiration is a two-step process called the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain um, as far as efficiency goes getting 36 ATP out of one glucose is being about 38 percent efficient so we're still leaving 62 percent of the mo of the energy behind that 62 percent gets turned into body heat Okay, even a car is not 100% efficient with its gasoline. Okay, a lot of it gets wasted. It gets turned into heat that the radiator has to take away from the engine and everything else. So 38% is pretty efficient uh, for breaking down glucose. And I just wanted you to have an idea of how efficient we are. And obviously, we need the body heat to maintain our temperature of 98.6. So this is not a waste. Uh, Cold-blooded organisms, they need that heat as well. So... 38% gets turned into ATP, the rest is body heat, and really none of it is a waste. Okay, <clears throat> if there's no oxygen around, this happens to us sometimes. If you're running, you can't breathe enough oxygen in to get to all of your cells. So your organs in your brain, they'll take the oxygen and they'll do the cellular respiration because they need those 34 extra ATP for every glucose. But... Uh, your muscles may have to do one of these because there's not enough oxygen for your leg muscles as you're running or whatever you're doing. Um, this also happens with bacteria and yeast cells and things like that. So if there's no oxygen, anaerobic fermentation happens. Aerobic means having to do with oxygen. A or an are prefixes that means no or not. So this is a process where there is no oxygen. So it's a fermentation where there's no oxygen. Here's a definition of fermentation. We take those two pyruvic acid molecules from glycolysis, and we're going to make them into molecules that are less dangerous to the cell. Those pyruvic acids and some of the other things that get made, they can't really exist in the cell without causing some damage. So fermentation is going to make them into compounds that aren't as dangerous. Okay. So remember, we start out here with glucose. We make two ATP. We had to put two in. We got four out, so we made two. We end up with these two molecules of pyruvic acid. If there is oxygen, so I'll put O2, you do cellular respiration. 
and we just talked about that leg of the journey. If there's no oxygen, then we're going to do this part of the path that we just called fermentation or anaerobic fermentation. Now let's look into this fermentation in a little bit more detail here. Remember, pause this if I'm going too quickly, uh, rewind it just so you can get everything down. When we do fermentation, we're not making any more ATP. All right, we're stopping with the two that we gained from glycolysis. But our goal here is to get some compounds that may be dangerous and get rid of them. There's two kinds of anabolic, or sorry, anaerobic fermentation. Lactic acid fermentation, alcoholic. Lactic acid fermentation makes lactic acid. Alcoholic makes ethanol. Lactic acid fermentation is conducted by animal cells and some bacterial cells. Alcoholic fermentation is conducted by bacteria, yeast cells, and plant cells. Lactic acid fermentation, uh, the peruvic acid molecules are made into lactic acid. Alcoholic fermentation, those two peruvic acid molecules are converted into ethanol, which is a type of alcohol, and carbon dioxide. Over here with lactic acid fermentation, you felt that before. If you feel sore the day after a workout, some of that soreness is because your muscles had to do lactic acid fermentation because they weren't getting enough oxygen, and it stays around your muscles and makes you feel sore. Sometimes stretching or using your muscles again the next day will pump that lactic acid away from the muscles and make you feel less achy. Um, also, in lactic acid fermentation, sometimes we make use of bacteria that do this to make yogurt or sourdough breads or sour cream or sauerkraut, and we can make foods that have that bitter, sour kind of taste. If you ever had a unflavored yogurt, you know that sour taste that yogurt has? So, not only does this happen in our bodies, but we can take advantage of it and make certain flavors in foods by having these bacteria do this lactic acid fermentation. Over here with alcoholic fermentation, we have humans... We as humans, we have certain creatures do this, and we make ethanol. Okay, we take that byproduct, and we'll add it to gasoline. Uh, if you fill up at the gas pump, it's say may contain 10% ethanol. Well, that's where it comes from. They do this with corn, and bacteria make the ethanol. Um, certain beverages, wines and beers and things like that, are made by yeast cells doing alcoholic fermentation to, gra to grapes and things like this. Um, we also make foods with this type of uh, fermentation. The CO2 released by alcoholic fermentation uh, from yeast is what makes bread rise. So that's lactic acid fermentation compared to alcoholic fermentation side by side, um, what creatures they happen in, where you might have heard of them before, and how we as humans may take advantage of these processes to make things, foods and fuels and things like that. All right, take a look at this picture. I would encourage you to write this down because this really breaks it down really nicely for you. Um, and if you take a look here, we're starting out with glucose, which is C6H12O6. If it was a photoautotroph, this was made by photosynthesis. If you're talking about a heterotroph like us, this was consumed by eating a plant or an animal that ate a plant. We said the first thing that has to happen here is glycolysis out here in the cytoplasm. And that will make two net ATP for us. Now it depends, is there oxygen there or not? If there is oxygen, we kind of follow this path and we go into the mitochondria. And we do cellular respiration, which is made of step one, the Krebs cycle, step two, the electron transport chain, and we make 34 more ATP. If there's no oxygen present after glycolysis, we take our two peruvic acid molecules, and either lactic acid fermentation occurs or um, alcoholic fermentation occurs. And, you know, here you, you make no, no extra ATP is made. Okay, on this side, you only have the two from glycolysis, so it's very inefficient. That's why you can burn ethanol and power a car with it. Cause there's so much energy left over in that ethanol because you never got it all out like you did if it were to move into a mitochondria with some oxygen. So this map really summarizes how we can break glucose down um, and what happens. Remember the bottom leg of this, that is the cellular respiration leg. The top leg is you have no oxygen, you can do some form of fermentation. All right, and just take a look at this little summary.